something called irradiation. The irradiation that you're going to do is going to be a very low effort. So what I mean is you're going to try to create a co-contraction throughout the entire body. Just kind of... So this is the... low intensity on the morning routine. So the irradiation, as you make a circle within your joint, you're going to try to draw the circle while traveling through a density of about 30% denser than air. So you think you have a self-isometric in your arm and you're traveling through the medium of something 30% denser than air. So we want you to go through your greatest range of motion being a rotational range of motion because that's going to give your nervous system more feedback and express more information into your nervous system. It has to be controlled so that you're always trying to control that joint and dissociate other joints out of the movement. What I mean by dissociate other joints out of the movement is that the joint that we ask you to move is the only joint that you move and you don't have any other coupling from <coughs> other joints. So this is the morning routine. For the neck, you're going to irradiate through your body doing that co-contraction of about 10 to 30% of your maximum effort. You're going to draw that chin down, bring the chin towards one shoulder, over the shoulder, and as you do this, try not to side bend, try not to hike either one of your ears into the shoulder. You'll draw the chin up to the sky, try not to push your hips forward as you do this and back over to the other shoulder, noting for those exact same compensations. spine you're going to radiate through your body at about 10 to 30 percent of your maximum effort <clears throat> fold your arms over your chest try to segmentally one vertebrae at a time flex down as you do that try not to allow your hips to spill backwards you're going to rotate towards one direction and begin laterally flexing towards that direction try not to have your hips spill out to the side as you extend back don't let your hips spill forward and same thing as you rotate back to the other side, don't let your hips move anywhere. For the scapula, you're going to irradiate again through your body, 10 to 30% of your maximum effort. Your arm's going to go out at about a Y angle. So my arm here, I'm going to take my arm out to a Y angle. Now I'm going to start to raise my scapula up into my ear without flexing my head down, without side bending. I'm going to pull my scapula back towards my spine and down to my back pocket without letting my elbow bend and without arching my spine. As it drops into my back pocket, I then draw my scapula forward, 
without rotating my spine this way, and it's gonna come back up into my ear. Humeral joint, try to irradiate through your body 10 to 30 percent of your maximum effort, drawing the circle with only your shoulder. You're going to start to at the shoulder, noting that you don't get any hiking of your shoulder blade, and then you don't start extending back as your arm flexes past your ear. As you approach your ear, also note that your elbow doesn't bend. Try to keep all of those joints solidified. You're drawing that arm back. Rotate and wind that arm in maximally. So once you approach your greatest roadblock here where you can't get the arm anywhere else, you're gonna wind that arm in maximally and then continue to reach back. As you reach back, try not to side bend through this and you're gonna continue winding that arm in throughout this entire range of motion. And that when you arrive to your hip, your shoulder is completely internally rotated and you'll see that your palm is facing away from your hip. From there, you can reset and start. As we retrace the other direction, you'll be starting in internal rotation and drawing back from there. As you hit that roadblock, you'll wind out maximally from there, trying not to rotate the trunk, and you're going to reach up and overhead.
elbow, you're going to radiate through your body, 10 to 30% of your maximum effort. You're going to take this finger just to give yourself a little bit more feedback, touch your elbow. You're going to start from extension and supinate as much as you can from the elbow, noting that it's not coming from your shoulder. So try to supinate as much as you can through the elbow. You'll begin flexing, holding supination strong. Then you're going to maximally pronate and begin extending down. As you do this, try not to side bend through the spine and try not to get any shoulder movement. You're going to radiate through your body 10 to 30% of your maximum effort. As you do the wrist, you're going to part that elbow. Now I want no elbow movement, so as you start to flex that wrist back and then in, try not to allow the elbow to do any rotation. So one thing that will help here is to put your cell phone on top of your forearm, and that will give you a lot of feedback. As you flex towards yourself, try not to have any mutation in the hands, so no folding of the hands this way, and then same thing as we move out towards the thumb and back through. It can only come from your wrist. Body, 10 to 30 percent of your maximum effort. As you flex the hip up, you're going to flex as high as you can without allowing your spine to flex forward or this down leg to bend. 
Try to keep that knee straight. Think of stomping your foot through the earth. And as you flex, no flexing through the spine. As you open the hip, try to look for this trail hip wanting to follow. You're going to try to not let that follow. Then you're going to try to maintain this knee staying as high as you can and then start to bring your heel to the sky. Once you max out that motion, you're going to start to extend through the hip, drive that back, and bring it right back through. For the knee, you're going to irradiate throughout your body at 10 to 30% of your maximum effort, and you're trying to make this rotation be strictly from your knee. As we do it, you're going to note that your tibia does in fact move as you go through your rotation. So you're trying to get that tibia to move internally and externally. So we'll start from a flex position. You just hug the leg, whatever's comfortable. You can hug it this way, you can hug it this way. I'm going to start in a flex position. Externally rotate and noting that the shin actually moved. From there, you're going to hold that, extend through the knee, and then you're going to internally rotate, moving the tibia this way. Mm. Holding that rotation in, you'll start to flex the heel back in and back mm. out. Patella will be the only one that you don't do active. We just want to get in the habit of moving that patella around so it doesn't get sticky. <clears throat>
going to actually just grab the patella, try to relax the quadricep as much as possible. If the quadricep is contracting, then you're going to get no movement out of your patella. So relax that guy as much as possible, and then you're just going to trace that patella in a circle. So just kind of tracing around it and moving it. You can imagine a clock, you're going to move to 12 o'clock, to 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, back to 12 o'clock, and then just retrace the other way. For the ankle, you're going to irradiate through your body at 10 to 30% of your maximum effort. to get just your ankle to move and now you're trying to dissociate that shin or knee out of the movement. So as you start to flex up, you're going to take your fingers onto your shin so it gives you a little bit of feedback on if that shin moves. Remember, we don't want the shin to move now. So fingers on the shin. As you rotate that ankle out, you don't want that shin to start to follow. You'll gas pedal down. Move in. Again, you don't want to go so far that the shin moves in and back up. Rotation only coming from your ankle.
toes. Obviously, we're not going to make any circles or rotations in the toes, but it's very important that we start gathering some control uh, over how the toes can move since we're always having to live in shoes. So we're going to start with the small toes staying on the ground, and you're going to lift the great toes. And you'll tap back down, lift back up, tap back down, lift back up. Next one's going to be big toe down, little toes lift, and you're going to try not to fold those feet in. So try to keep the feet in place. You can tap little toes down, big toes stay down. Toes up, tap down, toes up, tap down, toes up, tap down. Next, all the toes are up, and you're going to keep the little toes up, and just tap big toe down, big toe up, big toe down, big toe up, big toe down, big toe up. Now, big toe stays up, little toes tap 